it's a good, it's a great New Year's Day because I've kind of re referenced it over the last year. Today um, marks the 25th year that Charlotte and I, our family, came here to pastor the, the church. That's okay. I appreciate it, but I give all of the glory to the Lord. To me, that's that's a pretty, that's a milestone. Um, there was a time when I just I didn't think that would happen, um, we, and we never know each day, each year. But um, it's certainly been one of the great blessings of our life, and I'm grateful to the Lord for each new new year. I'm not planning really to preach this morning. <coughs> Excuse me, and I wanted to give out opportunity. We very rarely do this, but this past year. As every year, we've seen such a variety of different experiences. <coughs> Excuse me. Got a little tickle in my throat. We've had great joy. We've seen weddings. Um, we've had births. And we've had great sadness, too, the, the loss of Karen and <coughs> others. And that's every year. Just we don't know from day to day what each day will bring. But through it all, the one thing that remains constant and true is the faithfulness of our God, the goodness of God. We thought we'd like to, if you, if you have a short, maybe a word of praise, thanksgiving, I'm thankful for Bridget. <laughs> and, uh, I give a word of thanksgiving here for... <clears throat> I want to give you an opportunity, if you'd like to... You don't have to, but if you do, I want to give a word of praise, um, testimony of God's goodness to you. Feel free. And th if you don't, that's okay. I know you're not thankful, but that's all right. I, <laughs> no. <clears throat> you just want to hear me. Okay, that's, that's good. I like that. Eric? Hallelujah. Yes, he's. Yeah, he's. Uh, he's certainly a blessing. He's going to be a handful too. He's already crawling around and uh, brought him in the office this morning for prayer, and he's looking around like, yeah, I could get used to this place. You know, like, a lot of, a lot of books. So yeah, we're really, we're grateful for, for that the birth of Samuel. Anybody else have any? Kathy. Um, I'm, not, I'm not just saying this because it's the 25th year, but each year I think I become Well, praise the Lord. I appreciate that. Yes, we, we give God all the, all the glory. I, I have an, another little testimony. Um, the interview that the Lord gave me an opportunity to <laughs> to give with uh, Chris Arnson. I, as many of you know, I was frustrated um, because of the technical. We should have had Eric <laughs> there. Um, the sound, I wasn't able to hear. I just was frustrated um, doing it. But I also re realized that it's just like the Lord to humble us in that way, to, to expose our, our weaknesses, even though it wasn't my fault because of the technical ability. But I got an email from Nigeria. Um, a brother heard the interview from Nigeria, and he was moved by a brief testimony of uh, just how sometimes, you know, it can, it can be a challenge to be a pastor um, in the ministry itself. But I shared, and I can't even remember exactly what I shared, but he was touched, he was moved, and he wanted to um, ask for prayer and ask for some encouragement that he's struggling. And I, I was kind of a little like, eh, I'm not sure. You get these emails from different places, you know. Um, so I was just a little, mm. so I, I forwarded it to Chris Arns, and, you know, and he was really, really blessed. But then I got a, I answered the email. I was a little hesitant because you never know, you know, is this some kind of, oh, yeah. but it seemed right. He, so got another correspondence. So I'll be sharing some more information. I'm praying about how we are going to be able to 
encourage this brother and uh, trying to establish a reformed church in Nigeria. And he says he's getting a lot of opposition from other churches, which is unfortunate. But anyway, I'm thankful for, for that. And I thought, well, God has his way. So I thank you all for your prayer. Continue to pray. Ask God to use us. Anybody else? Anything else you'd like to tell? I am thankful for all of you. <laughs> it's confession time. I find many ex try and find many excuses not to come to church. <laughs> Most of the time they're legitimate, but every every once in a while it's because I'm lazy. <laughs> but when I do come, I love seeing your faces. I love being in your presence. God has brought me to this church. I was in the same kind of church when I was here before I went to Arizona. When I got to Arizona, I said, God, you're going to have to find me a church. And he did. Just like Pastor Mark, Pastor Nolan is a teacher. He expounded on the word, and it was so great. And when I came back, I knew this was a church I was coming to attend. I love all of you, and I hope you put up with me. <laughs> we'll try. We're going to try. And remind me not to be so lazy sometimes. <laughs> Thank you, Jesus. I think that's something that afflicts all of us one time or another, Helen. So don't. But we're glad to have you here to be part of the church. Um, anybody? Well, I can say something if that's all right. Yeah, just to thank you all. Um, I keep getting these cards every day. Uh, people who uh, watch the Zoom service. Or so many of them. And uh, they just were blessed by it. I've gotten so many. Uh, the whole staff, my daughter in law could have been a folder. Um, but there, at least, was, by my count, 70 or 80 people hooked up that evening. And I get, I've gotten others after the service. Eric sent a link out uh, to me. And that was good, because others said I missed it. And I watched it. So, but thanks to Eric. And over Christmas, <coughs> I, I had four or five others said, could you send me the link? And I couldn't find it, <laughs> of course. And, and then I turned on my email. And this morning, where's Eric? He had sent me an email with that link on it. And I was, God, you know, if you don't believe in his sovereignty. <laughs> but the point is, that was, it blesses a sad event like that. But the gospel heard through that. Through Pastor Mark. Pray about that, but all those people, because many of them have never heard it before. Thank you. Amen. Well, praise the Lord. I'm, I'm not going to preach, but I do want to share um, scripture that kind of sums up my feelings. Um, and again, you know, it's every year is like this. It's, we don't know from day to day. <clears throat> what each day will bring. Each day has enough trouble of its own, the Lord said, and we trust him for each day and the grace. Um, this past year has been an interesting year in many ways for us, not only personally, corporately, but na our nation and the world itself. It appears that there's a greater uh, and a swift descent into great darkness, <coughs> and the floodgates appear to be. You know, God is awesome, he's in control, and he's sovereign, and we know that he's accomplishing his great purpose to glorify his son. And we, again, have to trust him each day. It's all the more reason why it's so important to be part of the body of believers. The only place where we're going to receive the encouragement and the strength and the help that we need as believers is from one another. We're not going to receive it from the world. The world hates us, always has and always will, because they hate our Savior, they hate our Lord. It's sad that that's true, but he said, don't expect the world to love us and to encourage us. We shouldn't be surprised. It's not easy, and, and again, I think it's in, in many ways, I don't know what we're going to expect to see as time goes on, but we're going to expect and, and understand that God's grace is sufficient, his strength. He's accomplishing his purpose of redemption 
and grace, but we need each other. The body is so important, and it's, it's a testament, testament of God's wonderful grace that he takes people just like us, brings us together in a body, and uses us to accomplish his purpose. There's nothing, nothing like it, like being part of the body of Christ and loving and honoring our, our Savior. I look back in my, my files and, you know, I thought about you know, 25 years. That's, that's a long time in, in many ways. Um, and many, not all of you, I mean, even over the years we've seen growth. We've seen, you know, folks come to the church and be part of the, the church. And some, a few of you go back 25 years um, to the early, our days here. The church is here longer than that, but... Um, and we've seen a lot of changes over the years, and especially after the first three years or so. Um, God is just awesome in his grace of using imperfect vessels like us and to continue to um, accomplish his purpose. And, and the, the, the main reason why I, I believe, and it's no reflection on myself or Pastor Tom, or, but we, we love the word of God. We're committed to the word of God. None of us are perfect in our understanding or application of it. Or pre we could all grow and improve, but our hope, our, our confidence is in the Bible, the truth of the word of God. And the reason I'm saying that is I'm really, I shouldn't be surprised, but I've been more aware of some of the big names in Christendom. And I'm not talking about the, the heretics of the word faith, prosperity message. I'm talking about people who, that are considered to be evangelical, if you will, and that are, are downplaying and even speaking against the Bible. I just came across a, a, an individual who, maybe I'll, I'll mention him later, but his attitude, his, he's a well-known, one of the biggest pastors churches in America, we don't need to say that the Bible says it's too much. We talk too much about the Bible says this, the Bible says that, the Bible says, all we need is Jesus. And I'm thinking, you know, pal, I, I, I want to say you're crazy, but I want to be charitable. How else do we know about Jesus without the Bible? How else, but most people are just... And so I guess I'm saying we need to continually pray because it's there's a pressure to give in to the world and to appease the world and to want to be pleasing to the world. I'm not saying it exactly, but I don't know if it was John MacArthur or R.C. Sproul, one of the said that the business of the, the church is to feed the sheep and not entertain the goats. Feed the sheep. And so I, 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 was, I look back, and 25 years ago, I didn't preach this verse, but it was in some of the notes that I, I came across. And I did a study in Philippians. And I'm, again, I'm just going to read and just make several brief comments because it sums up to me my feelings here at this 25th anniversary, if you will. I'm, I'm looking to the Lord. I'm not going to say 25 more, but <laughs> <laughs> who knows? Um, Philippians chapter 1, beginning with verse 3, where Paul says, I thank my God in all my remembrance of you, always in every prayer of mine for you all, making my prayer with joy because of your partnership in the gospel from the first day until now. And I am sure of this, that he who began a good work in you will bring it to completion at the day of Jesus Christ. Another year down, another year closer to the day of Jesus Christ. That's a reason to say Happy New Year. That's a reason to rejoice. We don't know what this year is going to bring. We don't know 
the road that we're going to walk down. But it's going to be a year closer to the day of Jesus Christ. And Paul thanks God for the partnership. And that's how we look at it here. It's a partnership in the gospel. We work together and serve together. And I'm sure that he who began a good work in you will bring it to completion. He said, it is right for me to feel this way about you all because I hold you in my heart. For you are all partakers with me of grace. Now Paul says, in both in my imprisonment, and thank God I, I'm not able to say that, and in the defense and confirmation of the gospel, and that's the key. The gospel, you say, well, God doesn't need defending. No, but the gospel needs to be proclaimed and be held, held to and to be defended in the sense that we refuse to compromise it in order to become popular and accepted. And we work together. It's not just the role of pastors or teachers to defend the gospel and to be committed to the gospel and to hold on to it. But even in his imprisonment, even if it led to, and it did lead to that, but in the defense and confirmation of the gospel. For God is my witness, how I yearn for you all with the affection of Christ Jesus. And it is my prayer that your love may abound more and more with knowledge and all discernment, so that you may approve what is excellent, so that you may be pure and blameless for the day of Christ filled with the fruit of righteousness that comes through Jesus Christ to the glory and praise of God. We look ahead to a new year, but we look ahead with faith and confidence in the knowledge that our God is sovereign and that he's able to do exceedingly, abundantly, above all that we can ask or think. So together, let us strive, let us resolve. If we're going to do a resolution, New Year's resolution. Let's resolve that together we will live lives, seek to live lives that are first overflowing in love. Paul says here, it's my prayer that you would abound, that your love may abound more and more. Overflowing in love for one another. And that's one of the things I'm grateful for. This is a loving church. Perfect? No. We have, can we grow? Yes, but there is a bond, there's a love here in this body, and I'm so grateful for that. First John says, Beloved, chapter 4, verse 7 to 13, let us love one another, for love is from God. Everyone who loves is born of God and knows God. The one who does not love does not know God, for God is love. By this, the love of God was manifested in us that God has sent his only begotten son into the world so that we might live through him. In this is love, not that we love God, but that he loved us and sent his son to be the propitiation for our sins. Beloved, if God so loved us, we also ought to love one another. No one has seen God at any time. If we love one another, God abides in us, and his love is perfected in us. By this we know that we abide in him, and he in us, because he has given us of his spirit. Overflowing in love, growing in knowledge and understanding of God's word. And we'll never apologize, or never seek to minimize the importance of the word of God. Second Timothy 3, 14. He's talking to Timothy, he said, you continue in the things you have learned and become convinced of, knowing from whom you have learned them. And from childhood, you have known the sacred writings, which are able to give you the wisdom that leads to salvation through faith, which is in Christ Jesus. All scripture is inspired by God and profitable for teaching, for reproof, for correction, for training in righteousness, so that the man of God may be adequate, equipped for every good work. The word of God, inspired by God. The word is true, 
and righteous and able to produce fruit in our lives, which leads us to going forward in the paths of righteousness. Paul said in Philippians that you might approve what is excellent, so be pure and blameless for the day of Christ, leading us in paths of righteousness and obedience. Let this year be another year of further our walk in Christ, walking, seeking to obey him, to please him in all things. Oftentimes it's going against the tide. It's going against the tide. But we must have the courage to stand for what God's word says, even if all are against us, even if it exposes us to the hatred and to the opposition and the rejection of the world. Remember, we're sheep. We want to feed in the green pastures of God's word. We're not to entertain the goats. We want to reach the goats if we can, but we must reach them with the truth and not seek to compromise in order to be accepted and pleasing. Paul wrote to the Ephesians chapter 4, verse 17, This I say and affirm together with the Lord that you walk no longer just as the Gentiles also walk in the futility of their mind, being darkened in their understanding. This explains what, why things are the way they are. They're darkened in their minds. Their minds are darkened by sin and blinded. They're futile in their thoughts, their philosophies, and their, they're excluded from the life of God because of the ignorance that is in them, because of their hardness of heart. They, having become callous, have given themselves over to sensuality for the practice of every kind of impurity with greediness. But you did not learn Christ in this way. If indeed you have heard him and have been taught in him, just as truth is in Jesus, that in reference to your former manner of life, you lay aside the old self, which is being corrupted in accordance with the lusts of deceit, and that you be renewed in the spirit of your mind and put on the new self, which in the likeness of God has been created in righteousness and holiness of the truth. And finally, showing forth the praises of our God in reverent and joyful worship. I'm sorry, folks, this year we're not going to get the lights and the smoke machines for our worship. I know that's a disappointment to, to you, but uh, that's not going to um, happen. <laughs> Joyful worship, yes, we have every reason to rejoice, but reverent worship, because we serve a thrice holy God, God of all creation. Heaven is his throne, and the earth is just his, his footstool. Hebrews chapter 12, verse 28 and 29. Therefore, since we receive a kingdom which cannot be shaken, hallelujah, cannot be shaken, let us show gratitude by which we may offer to God an acceptable service with reverence and awe. For our God is a consuming fire. Our God is a consuming fire. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, our gracious and glorious God, your faithfulness, you have brought us this far, Lord, we come to the end of another year, the beginning of a new year. Time flies away, O oh Lord. Man is so like the wind and like the, the grass. It's here today, gone tomorrow, but you are the everlasting God, the eternal God, and in you we have everlasting life. Lord, what is man that you are mindful of him? Like a vapor that passes away. But you, Lord, abide forever. With you, there is no change. And Lord, may we this year, each day that you grant to us, be a year in which we serve and honor you and bring glory to your name. We would grow in our personal trust and faith in you and our understanding of your, wor your word and your ways. Lord, help us to continue to grow in the grace and knowledge of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Help us to 
Lead the young ones in, in this fellowship, the young families, Lord, the young children, and see them come to serve and, and know and love you, Lord Jesus. Pour out your blessing and your grace upon this fellowship. Help those, Lord, who are discouraged and, and dealing with serious trials, Lord, whether it's through family, loved ones, even in their own lives, Lord. But, Lord, some are maybe feeling the pressures and the, the struggles of life. May we find grace, Lord, to help in the time of need. We would cast our cares upon you, Lord, knowing that you care for us. Father, comfort those who mourn and, and continue to bring healing and, and hope to each heart that might be broken here today, Lord. Father, we thank you for the joys and for the, the wonders, the gifts that you freely bestow upon us. We thank you that you will never leave us nor forsake us. You will not fail us. But Jesus Christ will be glorified. We thank you, Lord, for the gift of life. Each day is a gift that comes from your hand, and we're grateful. So, Lord, we ask that you might fill us with your Holy Spirit. Enable us, Lord, to walk each day to honor and please you. Lead and direct us. Grant us insight and wisdom in your word. Grant us, O oh Lord, as teachers and leaders here at the church with spiritual wisdom and understanding so that we might please you and be a blessing to the fellowship that Jesus Christ would be glorified and exalted. Give us opportunities for to reach out and to reach others, Lord, that do not know you. Let us reap a harvest, Lord, of precious souls this year in the kingdom of God. Father, we love you, Lord. We love your word. We love the fellowship of the saints. So now, Lord, go with us, and may we honor you. Especially this day, we might be with family and friends. Lord, whatever we do this day, Lord, may we do it for the glory of God. We ask all of this in the holy and wonderful name of Jesus, our wonderful Lord. Amen. Please stand, and we'll begin this new year the way we begin every day with the praises of God in our mouth. Praise God from whom all blessings flow. Praise Him all creatures here below. Praise Him above ye heavenly Happy New Year. <laughs> See you. <laughs>